Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about the five facts of Remdesivir that everybody should be aware of. If you are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. I'm so happy you are visiting my channel. Now in this channel, you will find science review content, updates on the latest global health topic. I also like to share tips and tricks for students' academic and personal development. If these are your interest topic, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have already subscribed, thank you very much for coming back. So on October 22nd, the US FDA officially approved using the remdesivir as the drug to treat COVID for adults and children over the 12 years old that require hospitalization. Now, this is the first official drug that is approved for the treatment of COVID. However, there are a number of facts that are debated by the experts in the field. Now, in today's video, we are going to look at five facts that I think everybody should know. So the antiviral drug Randemsphere was approved by the US FDA on October 22nd for treating COVID. Now there are a number of things that I think the public should know and in this video we'll look at those different facts, okay? First of all, a disclaimer, like always, uh, this video is my summary and interpretations of properly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any advice on the treatment, diagnosis, and prevention of any diseases, and I have no affiliations with any company that I mentioned in the videos. So first, a little bit background history and look at how Remdesivir work. Now, there are a number of videos or very good videos on YouTube already explaining how it works. So here is a very basic diagram showing you how this uh, drug works just to bring everybody on the same page. So here we have the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Now it binds to our ACE2 receptor on our cells and it go through endocytosis, i.e being engulfed into our cells now and then it will un start unpackaging its viral rna and using a rna dependent rna polymerase for it to reproduce okay having replicating more rna and therefore uh, reproducing a higher viral load now when you have the drug remdesivir what happened is that this drug will go into the human cell now this drug does look like some type of a nucleotide so this will actually make the enzyme okay the rna polymerase to be confused and start incorporating the drug into the viral rna and therefore you're having some rna that are malfunctions and ended up not having a uh, viral particle being replicated in the process. So that's basically in a nutshell of how Remdesivir work. Now first, let's look at the first fact, okay? Now this is coming out from the Remdesivir for treatment of COVID-19 final report. This study was published on October 8th. Now in this study, there were 1,062 adult participants in a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, now, which is a gold standard type of a study designs. Now in, in a nutshell, this study concluded that this drug was successfully shortened the recovery time from 15 days to 10 days comparing placebo group and the treatment group. At the same time, it also reduced the number of deaths by day 15 on those treatment. Now going from 61, okay, in the placebo group to 35 in the remdesivir group. So that is the fact of this drug. Now look at the fact too, okay, now about this limitations of this final report. Now we have to look at the participating countries in this study. Now, most of the sites, okay, look at those. United States, Denmark, UK, Greece, Germany, Korea, Mexico, Spain, Japan, and Singapore. And many of in many of those countries, the quality of healthcare is very high. So the, here comes the questions. What about the other countries with lower quality of healthcare? Would this drug work just as well? That is something we don't know. Look at fact number three, okay? Now, there is another very big study that is 
launched by the WHO in a conjunction with its partner. It recruited over 12,000 participants across 30 countries in 500 hospital sites. Now, over 50% of the participants were from Canada and Europe. And the interim reported on October 15, saying that all four treatments evaluated, including remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, and two other antiviral drugs and interferon, have little or no effect on the overall mortality, initiation of ventilations, and duration of hospital stays in hospitalized patients. Now, this report clearly provided some different answer than the other COVID-19 report that was conducted in other more developed countries. So here is something I believe everyone should know. Now look at the fact number four, okay, the FDA approval of remdesivir. Now it is a little bit controversial about this approval because the FDA did not consult its adversary board in this area. Now although it is not necessary or it is not required for the FDA to consult these adversary board, but it is also a common practice that FDA usually do with their drugs. So that leaves a question because this process lacked a certain amount of debate. Now, number five, the studies quoted by the FDA. Here we are looking at three studies there. The FDA quoted three studies in their approval press release. One of the study is the randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial that I first reported in fact number one. Now, the second reported study was a actually a randomized open label. So basically, everyone knows what drug is being administered. Looking at how this drug, uh, its effectiveness, for 5 days, 10 days with standard care. So there are a total of 584 participants in this study. Notice that this study was sponsored by the Gulet Science, which is the maker or manufacturer of Remdesivir. Similarly, the FDA also quoted a separate study, although it is still randomized, but it is open label. That means everyone know what drug is giving and receiving. The total participant is only 397 and it is also sponsored by the manufacturer. Now, the take home message is that although Randamsvir is now an FDA approved treatment for COVID 19 in the US for adult and pediatric patients 12 years of age and older that met a certain weight requirement and at the same time needing hospitalizations. However, the trial status are debatable. Okay, there are some trials showing promising results, but on a grand scheme, the trials that was led by WHO yielded something different. Now, more than half of the participants in were in countries that have higher quality of health care. So that left out some unknown when we are looking at countries that without certain type of good health care system. Now, finally, Remdesivir offers some benefit. However, because of some of the data are debatable, some of the results may not be as a guarantee. Now, this topic is quite controversial, and I've looked up quite a few sources to look at the overall pictures. Here are the sources that I went for to prepare for today's talk. Now, you are welcome to go through those individual links and look at those in greater detail. So I hope this video provided some extra info on Remdesivir. That is all for this week's COVID-19 update, and I'll see you again next Sunday at 7pm for another update on COVID. Bye.